Oofa, oofa, oofa. It is oh, 9.20 Saturday morning. We have been going for 24 hours and it is hard going. Wow. I feel like I've just kind of woken from the dead. I don't get seasick very often, but maybe I just didn't sleep very much last night. Well, I definitely didn't sleep very much last night. Maybe I'm just getting my sea legs back. But uh, yeah, I felt pretty woozy this morning. I was just sitting here on my watch and I was like, oh boy. Unfortunately, the weather is just not doing what it said it was going to do. We are meant to be taking a course at about 180, so due south. The problem is, uh, and the wind is meant to fill in from the east, so we have a point of sail, but it's not coming through that way. The wind is still coming out from the south and they're punching into it. I tried to lie down and as soon as I lied down, I was just feeling really ill. So I moved and I put myself on that couch there and I woke up and I was like, where am I? <laughs> What's going on? I feel better now. There's like a huge gas field that goes up about uh, 50 or 60 miles and we can't go inside that so we can't change ports. We are tapping. Annoying. Uh, I hope the wind swings around. The, the weather forecast was that it would swing around that by 11 o'clock this morning we would have easterlies or at least east in the wind. And it, all I need to do is we just need to get about 20 degrees more. You can see from the forecast, the wind kind of bends as it comes up into the Gulf of Thailand and there's not really much you can do about it. Wind swings around 20 degrees, we have a point fail, we can get down to the waypoint that we're at, at a clip. One that we can't. I made the judgment call to basically just crack on and this is what happens when you are running behind in schedule. You just think, you know what, the wind is on the nose and we gotta go. The sea state is, is really calm, so even though we're like feeding into it with the engine on, um, the boat's still really comfortable. Yeah, I guess just settling into being at sea and it takes a few days and by the time we're fully settled in, we'll be there. Oh good. I'm feeling half alive again, which is nice. I'm Teresa, this is Nick, and this is Ruby Rose 2, our floating home. Join us as we settle into life on board our brand new catamaran, documenting our adventures and never shying away from the reality of boat life. Subscribe to our channel and leave a comment because we love to hear from you and a big thanks to our community of patrons. Hello, it's me again. Oh, it's three o'clock in the afternoon and uh, we have just been tacking down the rum line all day and it's very frustrating. We're making quite slow progress. Just have to keep reminding myself that I'd rather be making slow progress towards Malaysia than being still in Pattaya, making no progress at all. But it's still very frustrating. Nothing we can do about it, nothing we can do about the weather. We've increased the revs on one of our engines, um, keeping a close eye on the fuel consumption. That's all we can do. After a day of trying to tack down the rum line, we've given up, we've dropped the sails, and we are just motoring into it. We've kind of trying to work out the best um, strategy to get the best BMG all day and we might as well just drop the sails and, and motor. We are making four and a half to five knots, not exactly uh, speedy. It's better than we've had all day, love. The uh, main halyard in shackle pin was half out. Hopefully, at some point, we'll uh, get a point of sale and we'll be able to make better progress. We've got 148 miles until our waypoint, at which point we will be between the two oil fields and make a course change. So we've got about 300 miles in total to do before we uh, get to Malaysia, baby. And I, for one, cannot bloody wait. Got time on our side, rain is 
stayed on home I need you on my fire I want you to know that every time you're away uh, Less frustrated than before. I kind of think it got to the point um, about two o'clock this afternoon where I'm like, ah, I'm getting off the boat, and then I realize we're 200 miles offshore. <laughs> there is something about morale on a boat that it's, you, things really affect you more. You don't flap as much, but things get you down more and up more. It's kind of like highs and lows, the higher and lower, I guess. Yeah, so the, we've had the wind on the nose, we've tried tacking, we've tried motor tacking. Eventually we worked out that the actual best VMG we could make was actually to drop the sails and motor. Which is frustrating, it's a sailboat. But you know, we were making three and a half knots um, with the engine revs at 1800. And we're making five knots, no sails and the buddy engine revs at 1900. So we are still hopeful that as we head south, the wind will fill in and come round so that we actually get a point of sail. So yeah, we'll... Um, get a meal down our necks, I can see the water for our emergency Torsolini going and then we will um, settle down for night watch. Our emergency pasta has uh, been our kind of backup meal for when we're on passage since we left the UK like seven years ago. We always try and find these like just filled tortellinis or whatever. Stir through some basil pesto and some parmesan and maybe some butter, salt and pepper, a little bit of pasta water. It's actually really good when you're just on passage and you just need something hot and filling and you don't want to work too hard for it. So um, yeah, anyway, emergency pasta is uh, our backup always. How far away is it? Close. Yeah. Three miles. Huh? Three miles away. <sighs> I haven't really eaten much today. I think this is going to be exactly what I need for dinner. I don't know if I have gotten this close to one. How far away is it? 0.35, about 400 meters away. It is slightly deceptive because it's f***ing massive. <laughs> no, actually, I think the best thing we do is just throttle back and actually yeah. let it just pass us. It's doing 10 knocks and it will just go straight in front of us. Yeah. So you can be explain to the viewers at home how you deal with like navigating when you've got these big ships um, around, like how do you work out whether you need to change course? How do you, like, how do you deal with that? There is actually a way of doing it that Bates Shiner taught me, which is actually stop looking at that and look at the bearing it's on, right? And if the bearing, if your bearing to it doesn't change, then you're on a collision course. So this is like a transmail. Mm -hmm. So that stand from there, the boat stays in that transit. Yeah. You take a transit, but also if you hit the boat, that, and then look at its bearing. Yeah. So bearing 305. Yeah. Right? If that bearing does not change, you're on a collision course. Yep. Yeah. So you, but basically, ideally, what you want to do is see the bearing changing. Finally, let me sleep because I was so tired. I hadn't really slept the night before, so yeah, he gave me like four and a half hours, which is really, really good of him. Just come on tonight, watch. It's 1.30. We're doing five and a half knots, which is lovely. The wind's starting to shift around a little bit. We've got an angle of 25 degrees now, so he's hoping that that just continues and come morning we can get those body sails up get some actual speed which will be just very very nice not much going on there's a few little fishing boats out here as you can see it's a calm night 
got a little bit slammy before, but it feels calmer now, so that's good. Hopefully Nick will sleep well. And there's not a lot going on out here. It's just, yeah, me and the Gulf of Thailand. Good morning from the deck of Ruby Rose 2. It is uh, quarter to seven. One thing you never, ever, ever, ever want to find on your coach roof when you're doing a rig check in the morning is this. It's a, uh, it looks like a toggle. And um, although it's a small toggle, I'm like, oh, f So look, first thing, the mainsail wasn't up anyway. So there was no problem there. But obviously we need to try and locate that. I just spent the last half an hour on laying on the flat of my back with binoculars, looking at every single piece of the rig fitting. Finally, I found out that it's actually that it's a it's a toggle that goes into the, one of the batten cars, which is dislodged. There's a little grub screw there that's come out. Luckily, it was still on the deck. I have to go and try and put it back now. And if I can't put it back, I will try and bodge it because we need to get a main up. So yeah, I will just be on that this morning. Well done. Well done. dolphins <laughs> the first time since getting to Asia I actually see dolphins I don't know if they're coming this way I hope they come and say hello that would absolutely make my day come over here guys I'll turn the camera around but I don't think you'll be able to see them they're just too far see they're kind of over here ah they're so close but they're not coming over I don't think they're interested in us maybe they're feeding or something Hello. What are you doing here? You look so sleepy. You see him? Oh, he's on our bed. Oh, let me go and see. All he'll do is take a shit on the bed, love, so. Oh, no, he's just gone into the bathroom. Hello, mate. Not much for you in there. Yeah. We are on our third day. What day is it today? Saturday. So we left on Thursday and the winds died off it is starting to swing around the last i saw which was just a couple of minutes ago we were getting about a 50 degree um, apparent wind angle which is a heck of a lot better than like the either i don't know we've had like 11 we've had 15 we've had eight we've had zero nothing that would give us a point of sale um, up until only a few hours ago so it's very, very pleasant indeed. Um, we've only got very light winds, so only about nine knots, but the fact that we've got um, a favorable wind angle at all is uh, a good thing. You can't see, but we are surrounded by gas fields. They're about 20 miles away, and we are just sailing through two restricted zones, um, one on either side, one to port, one to starboard. Once we make the turn, we've got about 180 miles to Terengganu, which is where we're going to stop and clear into Malaysia, fuel up because we will be getting there pretty much on fumes, I think, because we're going to, I believe, be motoring or motorcycling the whole way. We'll get some SIM cards and just have a couple of nights sleep, um, and that will be all in preparation for our next leap south towards Singapore, and we might stop a couple of times on the way down there. There are some lovely Malaysian islands um, en route and if we make landfall in daylight then we can stop and anchor and explore. Um, but unfortunately as we've said a number of times over the last couple of episodes we are in a bit of a rush to get to Phuket because we've got a ship to catch um, so we can't just dilly dally as much as we would like to take our time to get around there. We unfortunately cannot. But as frustrating as this sail has been, because it's been slow and we've been running the engines the whole time, at least it's been very pleasant so far, knock on wood. I really hope that continues. Uh, very comfortable, even when, you know, we were kind of motoring into a little bit of chop, the boat is just so incredibly comfortable. It's, you know, we've been sleeping really well while we've been off watch. There's been no trouble there. Yeah, it's just really pleasant. So I'm, I'm happy being out here. I'm enjoying myself, I'm reading my book and I'm just, you know, watching the world go by saw some dolphins earlier they didn't want to come say hello that was understandable i suppose but disappointing for me 
and soon enough we'll be in Malaysia. We're gonna say our goodbyes now. I think we'll wrap up this episode and I hope you guys really enjoyed this one. We've had, I would say so far, a slow but mercifully uneventful sale. Super excited about the dolphin situation. Um, I hope that you really enjoyed watching that as well. Please subscribe to our channel if you enjoy watching our sailing adventures. It really does help us out a huge amount and Next week's episode is going to be the rest of our passage down to Malaysia. We've got another day and a half left of sailing towards Terengganu. Or it might be pronounced Terengganu, I'm not sure, anyway. And I'm really excited about getting to Malaysia and exploring a brand new country by boat. I love Thailand so much, but it will be really fun to explore Malaysia now. And then in future episodes, we will be continuing our journey down towards Singapore and then up the Malacca Strait towards Phuket before putting this boat on a ship and heading off to the Mediterranean for the next chapter of our sailing adventures. So cool. all that sounds good. Subscribe to our channel, leave a comment. We love hearing your comments. Click the like button and we'll see you next week. Take care, bye.